Can you hear that in the background? You might be able to hear that in the background. Uh, first of all, thank you for joining me. We're going to do another short and very concise video on Slicer again here. Uh, in the background, you might hear my multi-material unit going off because I am printing like mad on that thing. I'm testing some things, so um, hopefully I'll be posting more pictures of cool prints. But for now, we're going to do some fun stuff in Slicer Prusa Edition. What are we doing? Well, currently, as you can see, I am in the beta version, which you can find on the GitHub. This will work on 1.40 and also 1.41, so you're good to go. You don't have to have the beta. Just have the latest release. You can find that on Prusa's website, uh, prusa3d.com. So what are we going to do? We're actually going to show you how to load and ready a multi-material print. We have to do some things. The first thing I like to do is to make sure that I go over here to the settings tabs and use the drop downs and I'm going to make sure to use a multi-material profile. And I'm going to start with the system presets because as soon as I hit the system preset for a multi-material unit print, it automatically is going to drop down and give me five, five colors. Because remember our multi-material unit number two uses five colors maximum. Now, unfortunately we do have to go to each one of these and change it to the generic PLA profile for the MME2 because we're just using some filamentum PLA and set that to generic and generic and you also have to go to the filament settings so this is one thing that's bugged out and I've sent some notices but go to the filament settings and you'll notice it still says my PLA profile so we have to go back and change that also to generic PLA and go back to our platter and viola we have everything good to go the next step is make sure our print settings are correct which also means we have to go to the fast because I don't like to print at 0.15 if I don't have to and this will print just fine at 0.2 what are we going to print? We're going to print a mini Joseph. Uh, you can find this on Thingiverse. I'll put a link in there. Uh, I have a little folder here. So let's find our uh, little Joseph Prusa character. So here's our files. We've got uh, five of them because there are five colors. Uh, one of the things I'd like to stress is to make sure that you load the object that would be touching the bed. And in this instance, the one that is touching the bed is going to be the black colors, which is his feet his body, his eyeballs, or not his eyeballs, his glasses, and his hat. So let's load the, whoop, yeah, let's load the black. And as you can see, we now have Joseph Prusa's kind of weird ghostly body with just the things he wears, his clothes, and all that fun stuff. Uh, this is step one. Step two is just double-clicking the object they just dropped in. So you can see that it's on the bed. We don't have to do anything fancy. It's already oriented because we want it pitched uh, so we're going to put supports under here, but for now, just drop it in, and this is with any multi-material object, just double-click, and it'll take you to the Settings tab. You can also get there by right-clicking the object and going to Settings. Double-clicking is just faster, and who doesn't want to get this done faster? So we'll expand this out a little bit, and we'll zoom in so we can see all this fun goodness. Uh, and this just acts just like the platter, so you can move it around, you can zoom in, but... As you can see, it has the one STL we've loaded, but we have four more. And the simplest thing you can do is just go into load part. <laughs> There's nothing else you need to do. Just click on load part. And we need all the other parts. So, And it automatically takes you to the folder you drug the first one in from. So this is actually pretty nice. So uh, we're going to grab beige. We're going to grab the gray, the orange, and the white. And we're going to hit open. And viola, look at that. It dropped in everything exactly where it needs to go. It's ready, sort of. The next step is to making sure that each STL, each separate piece, has the correct color going to it. And luckily our designer here already had marked what colors it should be. You could do the same thing. Uh, some things aren't marked as the color and you can just kind of randomly, you know, click the object. It, it highlights bright green and you can go in and manipulate it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the black. And my black is on uh, one right now. So fill my filamentum black is currently on one. My beige the skin tone so the face the hands the ears that is on five my gray my filamentum gray is on three and that looks like my gray is going to be his beard so he's gonna have a very lovely filamentum gray beard orange is on two and my white is on four so this is just how i have my extruder set up and again the colors don't match on the object here because it's just random colors so you can see the change uh, but yeah, uh, this is all going to be different for you. Remember, your colors will not be black on one and whatever on two and uh, all the other fun stuff. So let us go 
and hit OK because we are done here. And as you can see, we have our full object now, no longer a ghostly person with just a hat and, and, and glasses and some shirts and shoes. Uh, but we can actually look at this thing if we deselect it in some colors. And they're the wrong colors because these are just what's set up in the program currently, but we can change that. So if you want to actually see how this will look uh, before going to print, you can go to the print settings. And you go down to each extruder. So extruder one, remember, was black. So we can click this orange. We can change it to black. Boom. We can change extruder two, which uh, isn't blue. It is actually our um, orange. So we'll go to orange. Three is our gray. Again, you get this fun color wheel, so you could do basically whatever you want. Uh, we're just gonna go to the white, and then we'll pick a gray. Filamentum gray is about is about that. Four was my white, which is easy. That's just a dead center. Boom. It'll brighten that up all the way. We'll go to white, white. And number five was our beige, which we'll just go to this kind of pinky area, and that's kind of beige when you take a lot of the color out. Boom. So those are the colors. We go back to the platter. And Viola, look at that. We have a Joseph Prusa action figure in the exact colors it's going to be. Uh, the only other thing is we should probably enable supports. So we can just go over here to supports. And we can go supports from, I would say the build plate only. I'm just going to do that for this one. And yes. And there we go. It'll do all the math magic. And then what we have to do is hit slice. Uh, we're not going to do that because it's going to take a while. But this is it. Uh, we have our multi-material print cut up, put together, and all that fun stuff. Now there's one other trick I want to show you, because a lot of you guys love those flexi prints, the flexi rexies, the flexi raptors, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and there's people trying to cut them up, and there's also those, um, uh, someone has, had made a like kind of woven plastic material, and it's, in, and it's already assembled in a bunch of pieces, and you have to disassemble it. At least you think you have to disassemble it in another program. So hit delete all, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to zero here, and I'm going to load up a Flexi Rexy. So here's Flexi Rexy, he is just one file, he or she, you can have, you know, a lady T-Rex that's flexible. Uh, I'm going to hit the L key to rotate him in a way where he'll fit better with the purge block. We'll enlarge him, we can do all this fun stuff, because we want a big, big Flexi Rexy. And we'll double click him, and... He's just one piece, so I can't, I mean, I can click him, and I can pick an extruder for him, but I can also split his parts. Boom. Hitting split part is amazing. Uh, all we've done is break, broken him up into each of his individual parts. So you can set different things. So here's the tip of the tail. Again, bright, this bright green is the highlight color. It's not my favorite, but, you know, you can set, you know, each link. Like, let's say you only had a, you want to do a two-color print. You can just alternate one two, one, two, etc. I don't have to keep saying the numbers. I can probably figure this out just by going back and forth. And I think I'm, oh, and of course they're not all in order. So I guess I gotta do this clicking. One, that is two, that is three, that is four. This is seven. Uh, one, two, three, four. So this is gonna be black, this will be one. And click over here, that's gonna be two and click over here and that's going to be one and this is going to be two and this is going to be one and hit OK. And Viola, if, remember we had black and orange in there so now we have a Halloween themed Flexi Rexy. We can move it around. Uh, we can move the purge block around. But yeah, that's the easiest way ever to break apart something that has multi-parts, and there are some crazy stuff you can do. Uh, so check that out. But those are the easiest ways to set up your multi-material prints. Just make sure, right before you load anything, swap your printer setting to the Mark MMU2 setting. So make sure you choose that. The system preset is the most important uh, because that will open up all of these five color options. And then make sure to pick the proper print settings. Because again, they are all different. And then remember the easiest way to start manipulating things is to just double click your object you dropped in and you can start adding some things. So uh, rewatch the video if you missed anything. Again, I'm trying to keep these things short. So hopefully that helps you out with your multi-material printing. If you have any other questions, drop them in the comments. 
I'll try to get you there. Of course, I'm always on the forum, or not the forums, the Facebook group, and a little bit on Twitter. You can find me at, at your daily micron on the Twitterverse. So hopefully that helps. Have a good one. And uh, can't wait to see all the Halloween-themed Flexi Rexies out there, all right? See you guys.